Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.0 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier Module. Welcome to tutorial 14, Ship Ops. Today I'm going to demonstrate the procedure for doing a short takeoff on the USS Tarawa, which is a light amphibious carrier, um, basically a, a small ship with a deck uh, used for launching Harriers and helicopters and we're also going to be demonstrating a vertical landing back on the ship as well. Um, so a couple of things that you need to know in order to operate the Harrier in these kinds of modes. When it comes to the short takeoff it's pretty much exactly the same, in fact it is exactly the same as what I've already demonstrated at a FARP. Vertical landing however is a whole a whole new world uh, to experience and something that the Harrier is somewhat unique in its ability to execute. Uh, if you, well, if you discount the Osprey and the V-35 and various other aircraft. Um, when you're operating the Harrier in vertical flight, you need to be aware that while it's going to operate mostly like a helicopter, with you using the throttle kind of as the collective, um, it's going to operate like a very large helicopter. Your control inputs are going to lag a lot, and you need to be aware of that, so you need to make quite slow deliberate movements on the controls and wait for the aircraft to react. The reason for this is that you're balancing the aircraft on a column of hot gases uh, and your manoeuvring is actually achieved by uh, tapping bypass air from the engine and blowing it out of little nozzles on the wingtips, on the nose and on the tail of the aircraft. And so because of that it takes time for those valves to open and close and it also takes time for those small jets of air to actually have an impact on the aircraft's attitude. Uh, so very much worth keeping in mind. So uh, I'm going to proceed with the startup of the aircraft now and then we'll demonstrate the short takeoff. The startup is exactly what I've already demonstrated on the FARP startup video, so refer back to tutorial 1 for that, with one small change, and that is because we're on a ship, we cannot align our INS normally. Usually the INS requires the aircraft to be absolutely stationary while it's in alignment and of course we're on a boat. That's not possible. We are moving all the time. Uh, so because of that you must connect ground power, which when you're, when you're on a ship it's called the deck cable. And the deck cable doesn't just give you power, it also connects you to the ship's navigational systems. So once the deck cable is connected you can then turn your INS knob to C alignment mode and in C alignment mode, the INS will align with information from the ship's navigational computer. And that will allow you to fully align your navigational systems while being in motion the entire time. So, uh, you guys can rejoin me in just a moment once I've completed that startup and we'll go ahead with the takeoff. Okay, welcome back. We now have a fully started up aircraft on the deck of the Tarawa. Uh, we're now going to proceed with the setup of the aircraft for a short takeoff going down the deck. Now, like I said, this is basically the same as what I did in tutorial 2 in the FARP takeoff. However, there is one difference. Uh, where on that takeoff we had uh, an NRAS value, so we rotated the values at a set airspeed, in the case of the Tarawa, we rotate the nozzles at what is called the nozzle rotation line, and that's near the end of the deck. Uh, so for this type of takeoff, we're generally going to want at least 450 feet of deck. And if we take a quick look at the deck, uh, we should see, it's actually a little bit hard to see, but uh, at the bottom of the screen just now, there's the value 450 on the yellow line. Uh, that's uh, pretty much alongside the bridge. Uh, I'm actually going to do my takeoff from all the way back here, and that's marked 750. So we have plenty of space. And if I swing the camera around here to the very end of the deck, you'll see that yellow line that makes a T shape uh, at the end of the kind of uh, yellow runway line. That's our nozzle rotation line. That would be illuminated at night as well. Uh, so basically, we just careen down the deck uh, at 100% power until we reach that line, and then we pull our nozzles to whatever value has been indicated by the VREST page. So let's get started with that setup. The very first thing we're going to want to do is let's focus down on this right MPCD. We're going to go menu, we're going to go VREST, 
and we're going to tell the system that we're doing an STO, which is a short takeoff. Uh, now the aircraft uh, is not particularly heavy, it has a loadout, it has a weapons loadout on it today, but it's not at maximum takeoff weight. Uh, so we're going to do a dry takeoff, so that's a takeoff without using water. Uh, wet takeoff would be when we engage uh, the takeoff mode on the H2O switch, and that means the aircraft can then start injecting water into the exhaust at certain power levels. That cools the engine and it also increases the density of the exhaust, uh, giving us a bit more thrust. Uh, we're currently carrying 500 pounds of water, that's the standard uh, loadout. But we're not going to use it for the takeoff, we might use it for the landing, depending on our weight. So anyway, uh, like I said, we want at least 450 feet. Uh, and in looking at this, we can see nozzle stop for this type of takeoff with this gross weight is 55 degrees. And our gross weight is confirmed here. We're at 26,000 something something pounds. Uh, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, so I'm going to go across to the nozzle stop here. And I'm going to engage the nozzle stop at 55 degrees. Uh, and that's the, the first part of our setup. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the flaps mode into stall and stall mode means the flaps will lock at a minimum of 25 degrees and as I increase the nozzle angle flaps will start to increase all the way up to 61 degrees. I'm going to put them back down again just now. Uh, so we're going to use that uh, and then the last thing we need to make sure of is that the anti-skid switch is in the nose wheel steering position at the bottom. That means the anti-skid is disengaged uh, you don't use anti-skid when you're on the ship. Uh, this also means that uh, normally when the anti-skid is turned on, uh, your nose wheel steering is disengaged and the system says cast here, which means the nose wheel is free castering. In this mode, nose wheel steering is always on, so I can always move my nose wheel using the rudder pedals. And if I push and hold the nose wheel steering button, I get the high gain mode. And that allows me to do tight turns on the deck of the ship, which can be pretty useful. So, I'm going to get the aircraft in position at the start of the, the runway now, and I will then demonstrate the takeoff. Okay, you rejoin me. I'm currently at the 700 feet marker and uh, ready for takeoff. I'm just sitting on the tow brakes just now, holding the aircraft in place. Uh, we're going to use 100% throttle. We're not going to go above 100%, and we're not going to use uh, water for this takeoff. Uh, as I described before, we're going to accelerate down the runway, we're going to reach the nozzle rotation line, and then we're going to pull the nozzles to 55 degrees, which is where the stop is just now. Uh, I'm going to smoothly move the witch's hat, which is this reference here, up to the carettes, and then we will retract the undercarriage. We'll slowly bring the nozzles uh, back towards 25 degrees. We'll then bring the flaps into automatic. And then we'll bring the nozzles all the way back to zero degrees. And at that stage, we will be in normal flight. The last bit of cleanup would be to make sure that water is turned off. We're not even using it for this takeoff, so it will be. Uh, and that we put our HUD into navigation mode. So let's get started. I'm going to run up now. You can get the, the throttle up to about 70% without the aircraft wanting to move. Actually, I'm getting away with 75. Off the brakes and then full power. Making our way down the deck. Getting ready with that nozzle. At the nozzle line, we've pulled the nozzles. Witchy's hat is all the way up. Gear up. And we're going to start bringing Out. the nozzles back. Going for 25 degrees initially. Out. Out. Speed above 150 knots, Out. we're going to go flaps to automatic. Out. And then we're going to bring the nozzles all the way back. And then we can go into navigation mode. Pretty quick, huh? <laughs> That's us. We're in normal flight. And normal flight, you normally want to be above 250 knots before you're manoeuvring, because the aircraft can behave a little bit strangely at low speeds. But that's us. We're now fully transitioned into normal flight. Okay, I'm just going to come back around so that we can see the carrier, and then we're going to get the aircraft set up for a vertical landing. Now, um, one thing that I want you all to note is that uh, I am normally flying this aircraft in VR, uh, and it's much easier to do these things in VR. So uh, this vertical landing that you're about to experience might not be the cleanest that you've ever seen, uh, but the procedure will be accurate at least. So, here we go. 
we're making our way back towards the carrier. And what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to active pause the aircraft because we're going to quickly go over the procedure for setting up the aircraft for a vertical landing. So again, as with the takeoff, the very first thing we want to do is we want to refer to the VREST page. I'm just going to deselect short takeoff and I'm going to select VL, which is vertical landing. So we have a confirmation uh, of our gross weight. Once again, it's 26,000 uh, pounds. The limit for a controllable vertical landing is 20,000 pounds. So we can see straight away that we have a problem. Um, usually that's not going to be a problem because we would have already completed our mission and so we would have expended munitions and burnt a lot of fuel but of course I've just taken off. So what do we do about this? Well we have a couple of options. We can dump munitions uh, which is fine, that's, uh, that's an okay thing to do. Uh, we can also dump fuel. First option will be to dump fuel. So I'm going to just take a little look at the left hand console here and just behind the left and right fuel pumps I have the left and right dump switches. I'm going to turn both of these switches on. And uh, if we come back around and look at our fuel, we should now see that the fuel is starting to count down. And you'll you'll be dumping at a rate of about... Hmm, it's about a uh, hundred pounds every few seconds. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to leave that dumping for now. Uh, it will automatically turn off. It won't empty the tanks. I think it, it either turns off at whatever your bingo setting is, or I think it has a minimum of something like 1,800 pounds. Either will be fine for us today. Next thing we absolutely need to make sure we do is to disengage the nozzle stop entirely because this will stop us getting the nozzles into the vertical position and could cause us to crash, which would be a bad thing. Uh, we also, again, want to make sure that anti-skid is turned off. I can confirm that it is. And for now, while we're flying the approach, we can leave the flaps in auto but we need to make sure that um, before we actually attempt the vertical landing that we have the flaps in STOL. The other thing that we're going to do for today's landing is we're going to engage the water. Now the water will actually only start pumping at very high throttle settings, so it might not actually dump any water, but we want the switch in the landing position just in case we need it. So like I said, uh, limit is actually £20,500 for this type of landing. We're going to fly an approach from the rear of the carrier at 300 feet, we're going to get descended down to 150 feet above the water before we enter uh, the vertical. We're going to take a position left-hand side of the carrier, and then we're going to swing the aircraft over the deck. So, I'm now just waiting for this water. Let me uh, accelerate time. Then we won't have to wait quite as long. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the whole thing. Uh, we'll approach from the rear, we'll then begin a slow approach, and that's done using 60 degrees nozzle. Uh, and then vertical is achieved with 82 degrees of nozzle. Uh, so that's the pretty much the whole procedure there. And before I even need it, I'm going to turn the water to landing mode. And that has the master caution bleeping away just now. Okay, we're almost at the correct gross weight, and we don't have that much fuel left now, but that's fine. We're very close to the carrier. Just going to let that run down a bit more. I'll leave the aircraft with uh, still a decent amount of fuel, just in case we need to make more than one attempt at this. It's always good to have, uh, have go-around fuel. Just want it to run down a bit more. Come on, hurry up. Okay, we're back in normal time. Oh, I guess the dump is turned off. So it turns off at 2,600. No? Uh, yeah, yeah, the switches have flipped off. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I think we can work with that because uh, by the time we actually get ourselves in position, we will be just fine. So I'm just going to bring my view back to where it should be, like that. We're going to go into vstall page, just going to confirm the carrier's position. Ah yes, because as we're flying along the carrier, <laughs> in active pause the carrier still moves. <laughs> That's good. Okay, I wondered why I couldn't see it anymore. Uh, so I'm going to take manual control back, we're going to come out of active pause, I'm going to bring the speed back, and I'm actually going to start to bring the nozzles back to 60 degrees, which we're going to use for the slow flight. And I'm going to come around to point back at the carrier. 
And at this stage, I'm going to go gear down. That'll give us a bit more drag. And make sure that as your speed's coming down, you start increasing your throttle. Because the, the engine does take quite a bit of time to spool up from low settings. And that's us at about the right altitude now. And there's the ship. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to bring us around on the left-hand side. And I'm just using the, the throttle there to control both our speed but also our altitude here. Okay, and at this point we can actually go STOL on the flaps. So I've just popped them down and you see that immediately I get a much higher angle on the flaps. And I can now actually bring my throttle back and allow the aircraft to settle at a lower speed uh, and a lower, uh, lower rate of climb. It was actually ascending again. Okay, at this point I feel comfortable transitioning into the hover. So I'm going to bring the nozzle all the way down to 82% now and then use the throttle to control my rate of descent. Using a combination of roll and rudder inputs to get the aircraft facing the right way. And we're a little bit high, so I'm going to let the aircraft descend. We want to get it down to about 150 feet above the water. And we want to keep our some of our forward momentum at least, so I'm putting my nose down a little, just like you would with a helicopter. We're getting to about the right speed, position and altitude. This is actually working out quite well. Keep her coming. You don't want to get yourself into a position where you're having to chase the carrier too much in the vertical mode, because that becomes very, very difficult to deal with. And I've almost I almost got myself into that position, but I'm allowing it to slow down now. Okay, I can bring my nose up now and start to slow my forward speed. Need a bit more power descending. That's okay. There we go. Okay. And I'm bringing the aircraft over the deck now by just rolling it very slightly and maintaining uh, my heading using the rudder. We're letting the aircraft come down now. Coming down. Coming down. And idle and on the brakes. And there we go. And we can bring the nozzles back forwards in this position. So, that was a successful landing. Uh, we could now proceed to taxi to wherever it is we want to go. So, uh, I'm now going to show a little bit of external footage of both the takeoff and the landing, but in the meantime, I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, please, if you haven't already, subscribe, like and comment. It's a really big help to, to me and the channel, and I'll see you all next time.